Okay, today we're going to talk about blueprint reading. First, I guess we have to answer the question, what the heck is a blueprint? Well, a blueprint, technically speaking, is a form of reproduction. And uh, we happen to have one here, which is an old Spanish ship, which was reproduced on a blueprint format. And blueprints were originally invented or discovered in the 1800s, the mid-1800s, <clears throat> and used up through the mid to late 1900s, uh, up into the 70s, even the early 1980s. Uh, some companies were still using blueprints. And it was a, just a form of reproducing original drawings. And in that method, um, what started out as a white background with uh, black lines, inked or later pencil lines, um, would result on the in the reproduction as a blue black background uh, with white lines, and that became affectionately known as a blueprint. And um, today, that terminology still has stayed with us. Just as a matter of a history lesson, after the blueprint in the um, in the 60s and 70s and 80s, there was something used that was called a blue line. And uh, if you have never heard of that, you're fortunate because it was a horrible process. Um, it was a photographic paper that would be exposed with the ultraviolet light um, and an old, you know, 1970s looking black light. And it would run through the machine and it would, you would put the original drawing on top and the ultraviolet light would pass through the paper but not pass through where the lines were on the drawing. So it would expose the chemicals on the underlying piece of paper and then you'd take them apart and you'd stick them back in the machine. And the developer section of the machine used uh, ammonia that was mixed with ammonia and water, I believe. And uh, it had all these wonderful fumes that would make you want to pass out after about 10 minutes of working on one of these machines. So usually the young draftsmen, their first job was to go into the room and as long as they could stand it and make prints for the, for the old crusty old drafters. Fortunately, they didn't last too long and they were replaced by what you may see now, which are zero graphic... Oops zero graphic prints and that was originally the machines made by the Xerox company uh, and they had them in large, what they called large format copiers uh, with these for larger engineering drawings and that enabled us to basically make what we make today which is your your office copier type prints which are white with black lines um, the downside being that a lot of the zero graphic machines didn't really hold dimensions very well so on large engineering drawings they weren't always to scale they stretched a little bit from the heat etc uh, but it was a much friendlier process than the blue line or the blueprint method and then we fast forward to today where we still get our zero graphic prints sometimes we get color plots um, and what is probably more common now is that we receive digital files and these digital files can be the standard drawings that we would have gotten as your graphic prints or blue lines or even blueprints uh, and they're just in a digital format like a PDF or a TIFF or any no, one of a number of formats or what is increasingly common now is that we get 3D CAD models and we are going to have a series of videos that deal with 3D CAD models but for today and for this video series we are dealing with what we will generically call prints and that'll be all of this stuff and sometimes they're just called drawings uh, probably a more appropriate term would just be a technical drawing but uh, we're gonna call them prints we're gonna drop the word blue because it's long been past time to do away with that 
So that is what a blueprint is. When we talk about print reading or blueprint reading, we are talking about reading technical drawings. Now with that little piece of housekeeping behind us, we can get started. And what do we have here? Well, we have a block. And I don't want to get too complicated to start off here, but this block has a hole in it. And it has a little appendage sticking up here on the top. So what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at a at a, what is called an isometric view of this block. And in this view, we're going to establish a point of reference. We're going to call, if we were to look at this side of the block head-on, we're going to call that the front view. Right? If we were to look at this surface, the large surface of the block, <clears throat> head-on, we would call that the top view. And if we were to look in at this surface head-on, we're going to call that the side view, or more precisely, the right side view. So in this isometric view, it has the benefit of representing what is actually a 3D object on a 2D piece of paper. All in one place, we can see what it is. It's a block, kind of a flat plate with a hole in the top, and with this rectangular protuberance sticking up in the left-hand back corner. Now, sometimes isometric views will be used on 2D drawings, um, but particularly prior to the advent of CAD, uh, typically anything but the simplest isometric drawing uh, would be fairly complicated to make. Uh, it would, it would, you know, t there was a lot involved in representing the object in three, to look like 3D, um, none of the lines are parallel, and it would take quite a bit of effort to represent uh, mechanical objects in this manner. In addition to that, the isometric view really only shows three sides of the part. It shows, as we've shown here, the front, the top, and the, the right side. Right? So we've got our side view, or the surfaces we can see from the side here. We've got the surfaces we can see from the front here. And then we've got the surfaces we can see from the from the top here, right? But besides being difficult to draw, we can only see these three surfaces. So if, for example, this block had another feature on the bottom of it or on the left side, we would have to, as a drafter, we would have to draw a whole other isometric view that would show the you know, at least expose the left side and the bottom of this part. And then if there were other features, you know, per, that were obstructed from either of those views, we'd have to draw another isometric view, and each of them are complicated and take a long time to draw. So another method had to be developed that would communicate this 3D object on a 2D piece of paper. And that is what is the language of the engineering documentation school. This is called the development of the orthographic projection. Fancy word, I know. And all that means is that we make projections of this 3D object, 2D projections. They're taken orthogonally from the object itself and then we flatten put those flat projections on a piece of paper in a manner which is understood by all and 
if we we can see here we have our same object, same block with the hole in it, the protuberance in the upper left hand corner. And again, we have our front view here, right? And we're showing again that we have the top view here and our right side view here. And what we've done is if you can imagine that we put a box around our block and then we projected each of those views onto the sides of the box. You know, if this box was made up of like a movie screen or a curtain, we projected these views onto this flat surface of the box. And then over here, you can see if we were to unfold that box like this, right? What we'd end up with are these views in these locations or in these positions, okay? And again, we have our front view here, we have our top view, and we have our right side view over here. Okay, now this again, we're still representing for illustrative purposes. We're showing this in an in a isometric orientation. But what this actually ends up looking like on the engineering drawing or the blueprint is this. And this is our what's the classic three view orthographic projection. projection. Now,